Hi there, today's lesson, A-level mechanics, we're going to do moments, so I'll take you through the theory, and then we'll do some example questions, and a couple of exam questions. If at any point you wish to attempt the question, just pause the video, rewind, fast forward, whatever you wish. So objectives today, today you'll be able to describe what a moment is, or turn in fact, recall the principle of moments, and apply the principle of moments to static equilibrium problems. So what is the moment of a force? It's also known as the turning effect. The moment of a force about any point is defined as the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the turning point to the line of action of the force. Now that seems pretty convoluted and you might be thinking, not quite sure. However, it's pretty straightforward. Let's draw a little diagram here on this GIF. So if that's my original distance, and then apply a force in this direction at 90 degrees, then that's the force F multiplied by the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular just means that at 90 degrees to each other. So a moment is force times distance, therefore it's measured in Newton meters. It's not the same as work done. Work done is obviously measured in joules, but the basic, the, the more simplified units are the Newton meter but in work done, the force and the distance are acting in the same direction, they're parallel to each other. Whereas in a, a moment, they are perpendicular to each other. So same unit, completely different meaning. Moments can be either clockwise or anticlockwise. This is important. Moments are vectors and the direction is exceptionally important. So the principle of moments, you need to learn this. If a body is acted on by more than one force, and it is in equilibrium, the turning effects of the forces must balance out. So the principle of moments specifically is the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anticlockwise moments. Therefore, the system will be in equilibrium. So in an exam question, it may ask for the principle of moments. I would say the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anticlockwise moments. Therefore, the system is in equilibrium. Or words to that effect. So let's have a go at this question. If you want to have a go, just pause and have a go. I'm going to go for the answers. Calculate the moments of the 25 Newton and the 40 Newton forces on the door and the diagram opposite. So as you can see, these this force and this distance are perpendicular to each other. And this force and this distance are also perpendicular to each other. So the first one, 25 Newton force is 25 times 1.2 metres, which gives 32 Newton metres clockwise. As you can imagine, it's moving in this direction. And the 40 Newton force is the 40 times the 0 0.7, which would be in this direction, which is anti-clockwise. So here's a bridge. We have a couple of forces that we need to calculate, FA and FB. So what I'm going to do is show you how to, how to calculate FA and FB. I'm going to start with FB. So what I need to do is take moments about FA. The reason I do that is because this, there is two unknowns. So I have to take moments at one of the forces to eliminate it because force A times a distance of zero is zero. So that's very handy. That, selecting where to take moments from will become more intuitive over time with the more examples that you practice. So if you just trust me for the moment, it's from A. And we can apply the principle of moments, which is the sum of the clockwise turning effects is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise turning effects. If you want to have a go at this question on your own, that's fine. I would advise to set out a grid like this. So from A, anything that's going clockwise, put it on the left-hand side. Anything that's going anti-clockwise, put it on the right-hand side. All right, so let's go. So from the left to right, we just move across. So we keep going until we get to a force, which is 50,000 Newtons. We identify which direction it's going. In this instance, it will be going clockwise. So I can put it on the clockwise side, so 50,000 times the distance from the pivot. Our pivot that we've designated is FA, so the distance is four meters. Let's put that in brackets and forget about it for a while. The next one, keep going, 4,000 Newtons, again going clockwise, so plus 4,000 Newtons, times the distance from the pivot, which is five meters. Then we'll deal with those in a second, but equals, keep going, 
we get to another force, FB. FB is going anti-clockwise. So FB times the distance from the pivot, which is 8 metres. So I'm going to write 8 lots of FB. Then we just need to do some quick calculations. So 50,000 times 4 plus 4,000 times 5, which gives us 220,000, equals 8 lots of FB. So FB is simply 220,000 divided by 8. So FB must be 27,500 newtons. If you want to attempt that again, please feel free to do so. So this is 27,500. Now we need to find FA, which is very simple now that we've got most of the forces aside from one. So we can do the total forces going down because this system is in equilibrium. The total forces going up must be equal. So the total forces going down is the 50,000 and the 4,000. So that's 54,000 down. Subtract the 27,500 going up. And whatever's left must be FA. Therefore, FA is equal to 26,500 newtons. Well, let's move on to the next example. What I shall do is show you the question first because it's on different slides and then if you wish to attempt it, you can. Then I'll go through the answers. So this is the question. So figure five shows a child standing on a uniform plank, AB, which bridges a small stream. The plank has a weight of 178 newtons and is five, five meters long. The reactions on the plank at each bank are 429 newtons and 149 newtons as shown in figure five. Each reaction acts vertically. So the first question is to calculate the weight of the child. If you wish to have a go at this, please do so. And then the other questions is by taking moments about child, uh, about A, sorry, calculate the distance of the child from A. So let's have a look at these. So calculate the weight of the child. So it's the same thing as what we've just done. So we've got the total force going up, which is 429 plus 149. Gives a total vertical force, or acting upwards, of 578 newtons. The total down must be the same because this system is in equilibrium. So if we subtract the weight of the bridge, which by the way is acting in the center. The reason it's acting in the center is because it's a uniform plank. Whenever you get a uniform object, the weight will always act from the center of the object. So if we do 578 minus 178, we get the weight of the child to be 400 newtons. So next, we're going to take moments about A and calculate the distance of the child from A. So let's label this diagram up again. So we've got the weight, which is 178 newtons. It's uniform, so it's in the center. So it's 2.5 meters from the edge. Then we, we now know the weight of the child is 400 newtons. And we can use moments, the principle of moments. If you wish to have a go, please pause. If not, I'm going to use the principle of moments from position A to calculate the distance D to this child. So let's go clockwise equals anti-clockwise. So sum of the anti-clockwise is equal to the sum of the clockwise, which is the principle of moments. So let's start at point A and move across until we get to a force, identify if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then put it on the appropriate side. So the first one is 400 times D, it's clockwise. So I'm going to write 400D. Plus, there's another one, which is the weight of the plank, 178 multiplied by the distance from the pivot, which is 2.5 meters. Deal with that one in a second. Is equal to 149, as this one's going anti-clockwise, 149, multiplied by the distance from the pivot, which is the four five meters. So we've got 400D 
plus. And 178 times 2.5, so it is 445 equals, and then 149 times 5 is 745. Then we just need to make D the subject, so we need to do the 745 minus 445, which gives us 300 on this side. And then we've got 400D. So as you can probably see there, to get D, we just need to get rid of times 400 by dividing by 400 on the other side. So we end up with 300 divided by 400, which is 3 quarters. And 3 quarters is 0 0.75 metres. Let's not forget the unit. If you want to have a go at that again, just rewind. Let's move on. So, figure two shows a laboratory experiment to test the loading of a uniform horizontal beam of weight W. The length of the beam is 1.5 metres. The load M has a weight of 100 newtons and its centre of mass is 0 0.4 metres from the pivot. The beam is held in a horizontal position by the tension T in the stretch spring. So, the first question is add clearly labelled arrows to figure two so that it shows all the forces acting on the beam. If you wish to do this, please do this now. So from the pivot, we've got a normal reaction force. I'll just label that in. We've got the weight of this mass, which it says in the question is 100 newtons. I'm just going to label that. And then we've also got the weight of the beam. Now we don't know the weight of the beam, but it would act in the center, as it says that it's a uniform horizontal beam. So that'd be two marks. Let's see what's next. So the tension T is 36 newtons, calculate the moment of T about the pivot, and then calculate the weight of the beam. So I'm going to go back. If you want to have a go at that, please do. So to the tension is 36 newtons. find the moment about the pivot. So we just need to establish how far the pivot is from there. So the full beam is 1.5 meters. And we've got 0 0.2 meters on one side and 0 0.1 on the other. So if we do the 1.5 and subtract the 0 0.2 and the 0 0.1, we get the distance to the, from the pivot, which is 1.2 meters. So the turning effect is simply 36 times 1.2. which is 43.2 newton meters. Okay. Then finally, we just need to calculate the weight of the beam. So I'm just going to clear this. Let's label this up. So we've got this, this is 100 newtons. We've got the weight of the beam, which is in the center, which I'll just call W. This force here is 36 newtons. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the weight of the beam using moments. If you wish to have a go at this yourself, please do. So what we're going to do, what you should have established, is that the we must take moments about the pivot. The reason we must take moments about the pivot is because we've got the normal reaction force. So let's go from there. So clockwise equals anticlockwise. Clockwise equals anticlockwise. So clockwise is 100 times 0 0.4. So 100 times 0 0.4. Plus, we've got W times. So plus W times. And the distance, you've got to be careful here. The distance to the centre of the beam is 0 0.75 metres from the end. But we've got to subtract this 0 0.2 metres. So 0 0.75 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.55. So we've got W times 0 0.55. Put that in brackets. Equals, the anti-clockwise is the 36 multiplied by the 1.2 that we got from earlier, which is 43.2. Then what you need to do is just rearrange to find W. So we have 40 plus 0 0.55 times W equals 43.2. Rearrange to find W, so 43.2 minus 40, so 0 0.55 lots of W equals 3.2. Then to get W, it's just 3.2 divided by 0 0.55. So W is 5.8 newtons. Thank you.